think we're here. I don't know what's going on this morning, but we seem to have had a few technical issues and Facebook just wouldn't stream live. So hopefully you can see and hear us now. We're a little bit late. Um, I was here, just not virtually. If anyone can hear, see us, can you just let us know so we know if it's working all right because Yay! <laughs> Technology's not been our friend this morning, so thank you. Thank you for Denen. I know I say this wrong every time. Hi, Eden. Oh, thank goodness. And Rachel, awesome. So you can hear us okay. I don't know what happened there. It just was just a constant loading page, but the internet was working fine, so I didn't understand what was going on. Computer said no. Um, hi again. So thank you so much, um, and thanks for bearing with me there. Technical issues, it happens to the best of us. Today, just to make it more challenging, we are drawing an insect, which if you know me, no, this isn't my favourite thing to draw because it, I find it personally a bit challenging. So, as I say, it's good for us to push ourselves out of our comfort zones and to try new things that we wouldn't necessarily draw because that's how we get better as artists and that is no more true than it is today for me. So, I avoid drawing insects because I think, like birds, they're, they're quite exact, whereas when you are drawing animals that have a lot of fur is a bit more forgiving so you can you can change it a lot without it looking like you have does that make sense i think the cricket and any other insect needs a lot of accuracy which i'm not so good at so we'll see how we go today i'm going to share some facts about the cricket as well there's a particular reason why it's been chosen to represent an, an insect from china and we'll talk about that as well hi Pippa michael from bean and blood hi emily freya and jill Hi, and I know that I say this wrong, Alf and Nala. I know I said that wrong, I'm so sorry. And Pi, you can see as well, so awesome. So we've lost five minutes, so I'm going to try and catch up by sketching out the outline. I'm working on page landscape today. And again, got to try and get all these proportions in for this cricket. He's got some big old legs. We've got a wing in there as well that we need to draw. His antennae, is it antennae, that's the part, are slightly cropped off on this picture, so I'm kind of going to have to guess how long they are and where they would end, but we're going to do our best. So I'm going to start head shape down here, I think. I believe that's called thorax, is it? This part of the body? God, it's taking me back now to my school days, which was a long time ago. And then we've got a nice wing in there. The rest of the body. Who else is like, oh, drawing an insect? Is it just me? Or is anybody actually quite excited about drawing this as a new chance? Already I feel like this is not a good start. <laughs> but we'll keep going and persisting. Hopefully at the end I'll have something that resembles some kind of insect anyway. Aoife, sorry, my apologies. Aoife and Nala. So lots of pattern and detail in this little creature as well. And the photo isn't a perfect one because some of it's blurred, so I can't quite see the the feet on the back the back leg. So I'm gonna have to use my imagination to fill in the gaps. We've got six legs in total because he's an insect. So we've got these two here. There's two that are sort of facing towards us that I'm just sketching in now. And then there's two at the front as well. Three pairs of legs. So you need to make sure that you've represented those because otherwise he won't quite look like an insect if he's missing legs or he's got extra legs. Oh. Something's gone wrong already, so I need to like put in a sketch line to show where the feet should be landing because they're all, the proportions just don't look quite right. The positions of it for me, so I'll just adjust that as I go. I knew this was going to be tricky to begin with today. I think a lot of it is going to be on the initial sketch. It might take me a little while of adjusting things before I add colour and pattern yet. Yeah. 
my spirit. So I'm like, you're never late, Molly. I was anyway. <laughs> so you haven't missed anything because I was late starting because of technical issues. How are you getting on, Michael? Good. You're not struggling like me then, because I am struggling. <laughs> And we can see the other leg as well in the background. So we'll sketch that in behind. And the colours I've picked out today, mostly browns. I've got like a greeny brown as well. Because I can see that black and grey is what I've got. Okay, so a really rough outline. Not the best work, but it's a start. Let me move my page up so you can see it a bit better. That's a bit better. Okay, where to next? So really I want to sort of refine the shapes a bit because his head isn't quite the right shape. I want to get rid of some of these messy lines so I don't get confused as I'm drawing in. <laughs> so, quick facts about the cricket in relation to China. So for at least a thousand years, crickets have been kept as pets in China for one of two reasons. For their song, or more commonly, for fighting. Cricket fighting was a pastime pursued by people of various classes, including wealthy merchants and the social elite. So, interesting, isn't it? Um, probably not very ethical to keep crickets for fights. I imagine they probably gamble on them and make it a bit of a game to watch them fight and, and predict who's going to which one's going to win. The lifespan of a cricket is no more than three months, so they don't live longer than 12 weeks. Very short-lived, like a lot of insects. I'm going to go in and make sure I get that really big Oh, it looks a bit alien like, doesn't it? I've probably got it a bit too big on his face there. It's going to be a bit smaller. Big black eye with a big shiny reflection in it as well. A lot going on with his mouth area. Trying to figure that one out. This is definitely a, an illustration you could spend a long time on getting all the details in because there's a lot going on with this little guy. But I will do my best in the time we've got to get as much detail down as I can. You guys, if you want to spend more time on it, obviously you can do. You're not on a time frame like me. So he's got these little hooks on his legs as well, which I'm going to draw in as I go. I wonder what they're for. I wonder if they help him climb. You guys all had a good weekend. And if you celebrate Mother's Day, maybe you gave Mum a day off. <laughs> I did. I had a very chill day yesterday. I really am spending a bit of time getting the det details right before the colour this week. You notice I'm not sketching as quickly. I'm trying to take my time because I think this is where it can make or break it with an insect.
You may see his knee bone, can't you? Would that be his knee? Looks like it, doesn't he? He's got this, those little spikes coming down those back legs as well. And then I'm going to try and get some of these details on the wing, which is the bit that I struggle with a little bit, because it needs some accuracy. I think I need to make the wing a bit longer looking at him compared to the legs. That's better. It almost looks like a leaf pattern, doesn't it? When you look at the wings. I don't know what to do next. And then this big chunk of his body has got some pattern and detail in as well, so I'm going to try and get that in as well. You know when I'm concentrating because I stopped talking. <laughs> this is taking all my concentration. Okay, so that's my outline. Actually, that doesn't look too bad, does it? I'm looking at it on screen now, thinking that's not bad. Considering I hate drawing insects, we're doing all right. So let's see another fact for how we're doing. Time 20 past. That's not too bad. So crickets, unlike grasshoppers, because it's easy to confuse the two, they've got a lot of similarities. They are short and stubby and tend not to jump. So there they've got these big legs, and they don't jump. Interesting. A fully grown male is less than an inch long, so that's that. And while the female cricket is about 50% longer, so actually, normally in the, in the natural world, we see the males longer or bigger than the females. Sorry, I just caught, caught Michael's illustration. It's amazing, Michael. Do you mind if I show where you are at the moment? Look how well Michael's doing as well. That's really good. You were quiet as well. You were deep in concentration, clearly. Right, now, let's go in with the colour. So I'm going to start with the eye. And I'm going to make sure I leave that nice, big, shiny white highlight, reflecting light. And I'm going to go in with the black. But there's also a little bit of brown in there as well, so I'm going to try and do that as well. Message in there. Deneen, I'm actually Deneen's daughter writing this for Mother's Day. I made a riddle clue thing that made her go around the whole house finding clues to find out it was actually for no reason at all. It was just fun watching her. Oh, that's cruel. I like the style. <laughs> Don't do that to me, Michael. Mm. <laughs> I'll be disappointed. Uh, so 
so yeah, mostly greys, browns, and then I've got this sort of muddy, greeny, it's called earth green. I used it the other day, didn't I? I remember picking this pencil up and obviously drawn to it because when you look at the underneath of the cricket and the underneath of the legs, you can see like little green flashes. So I'm going to be using that as well. So let's do it. Let's get some colour down and see if I can make a realistic looking cricket. mixing a lot of my colours together really to try and get the right sort of shade but I, you know I don't think it matters too much if it's not quite the same as what is on the screen it's, it should still look like a cricket I imagine there's probably some variation in colours with them anyway Near the head, it looks like a saddle. Yes, do you know? I was thinking exactly that, doesn't it? Mm. Can you imagine a little person sitting on top of it? <laughs> Imagine the cricket. Yeah, I can see that. Okay, I might need to move a bit quicker because there's a lot of colouring and shading and patterns I need to get in. And then obviously I want to use the watercolour as well, so I might need to get a wriggle on a little bit. I think there's going to be lots of switching between pencils. There's a lot of different colours within each section. Are we winning, guys? Do you know, now, I was dreading this one. I really was. <laughs> to the point where I even messaged Joe and said, I'm dreading drawing this cricket today. But actually, it ain't so bad after all. See, things often are worse in our heads than they are in real life, aren't they? Lots of highlights on the legs. If you look at the, the structure of them, it almost looks shiny. So try and leave some lot white lines to, to represent that light reflecting off of them.
How do you make it look shiny? So I think I've just maybe preemptively, I, I didn't actually see your message, but that's what I just said about leaving white streaks. So if you look at his leg, you can see this line of white running, there's several of them. So if you try and do that, it's the same as when you're trying to draw something metallic. If you leave those white lines in those highlights, it will give the illusion or the impression that it is a shiny texture. Texture? That's not quite right there. You know what I mean. So that's how to do it. That's how I do it anyway. Michael's in deep. I don't even think you said two words today, Michael. He's in deep focus mode. <laughs> That'll be a yes then. <laughs> or you just ignore him then. Is that right? <laughs> Used to it. Oh, half past. Okay, we're we'll do. We're not not doing bad. Um, I'll probably slow down a little bit for the details. Feel like I'm rushing. Another fact, just give my hand a break. Um, insects have a head, thorax, and abdomen. So head, I believe this is the thorax, this is the abdomen, and then six legs. So that's how you can identify an insect. Um, they shed their exoskeleton when they need to grow. So just like spiders and snakes. Only male crickets can sing. Mm. They don't use their mouths or their legs to make the noise, but their wings. So it's their wings that they rub together to make that singing noise. So to sing, male crickets lift their wing casings at a 45 degree angle and rub them together. Hmm. Crickets can sing and eat at the same time. Oh yeah, because obviously they're singing with their wings, not their mouths. We should try that, <laughs> see what happens. I think it'll be a mess. Go in with the legs, I think, so I can give some attention to these patterns, these cool patterns you can see on his legs. Michael's already at the paintbrush stage. I am nowhere near.
or do I have any more facts? I do. <laughs> I obviously keep preempting people because I'm saying something and then reading the messages and that tend to tally up. I have got more facts though. But I'll I'll share some once I've drawn a little bit more because I'm going to run out of time. This is where those flashes of greens I can see on the legs. It's very quiet today. Got this little knobbly, I could have called it a kneecap, but I don't know if that's technically right. That's what it looks like to me. Oh, right. That leg. You fell off my chair. That's quite impressive. Why? I don't know. It's a really wonky chair. <laughs> it scares me. We are furiously switching between colours and shades like I am. Oh, my hand aching today. Okay. Oh, so far, right. I'm getting there. I just know that the wing is going to take me a little bit of time because of that pattern. So I really want to make sure I give allow enough time for that. I'm going to try to go as quickly as I can to get to that point. That and the abdomen as well. Not lot of shade in there. Bob's in the little spikes on his legs. Actually, think about it, I haven't got them over here. I think I've got them. Thank you. 
What have I missed? Loads of messages. You're done. Blimey. Well, well done. You definitely beat me. <laughs> Don't forget between 6 and 9pm tonight if you'd like some feedback. You're looking for the picture of this, my drawing, not the actual post for the draw along. The picture of my illustration if you'd like some feedback from me. But well done. That was super fast. <laughs> Way faster than I could have done. Um, some more quick facts. Da -da -da. Females have an ovipositor, the long stick-like body part at the end of her abdomen. I think this is a female. I was thinking this is when it said about them being longer in the body. So they've got this long bit um, blah, 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 on, the, on the end of the abdomen. Males have two wings and no ovipositor. So we're drawing a female. She can't sing. Um, the males chirp to find a mate. So they chirp to attract a female. And female crickets lay their eggs in the fall, so in autumn. When they hatch in May or early June, so quite a long time, um, there are thousands of tiny black crickets. But by July, they are bigger and large enough to start singing. The females lay their eggs in damp dirt by pushing their ovipositor, this bit, into the dirt. They can lay up to a hundred. Approximately, no, change that again. They can ch lay up to approximately ten eggs a day. Like all insects, crickets are cold-blooded. They sing faster or slower depending on the temperature. So to convert cricket chirps into degrees Fahrenheit, so to be able to know what the temperature is, you count the number of chirps in fourteen seconds, and then add forty to get the temperature. Well, that's pretty smart, isn't it? <laughs> you can use a cricket to tell the temperature. So as I said, in China, they literally keep these in pets. There's lovely little ornate cages that they make for them or purchase for them. And they can literally carry them in their pockets. It just seems crazy, doesn't it? And they are meant to be, represent luck, I believe. Katie says, this has been my fave one yet because I didn't trace it, I've just done it by hand, and it's amazing. Oh, well done. I can't wait to show you tonight where we send it, Bean. Oh, well done, Bean. That's a, I know that's a big step to do that, changing from tracing to drawing freehand, so I'm glad it's worked out well. Mum and Bud were speechless. It just goes to show, doesn't it? Like, we, we just don't know what our capabilities are until we give it a go. So well done, I'm really proud of you. Done. And Michael's done already. God, you guys, slow down. <laughs> I did do 14 minutes. Yeah, well, we were late, so I don't forget. We were about six minutes late starting. But I'm not done, though. I still have to colour and do detail. Well, that's that is fine, isn't it? You've got time to do that. They do that in Mulan, I think. Oh, yeah, the film Mulan. There's a cricket in there, isn't there? I'm sure. I've got a vague memory. Right, let me try and get some of this. I'm going to run out of time, otherwise. These patterns in on the abdomen, and then they've got to draw in some more detail on an ovipositor. It's a new word that I've never heard before. Had you heard of it, Michael? No. I've I've made mine a giant cricket on a giant rock. <laughs> okay. It's bigger than a tree for some reason. So it's I've decided it's a to giant it one. A, bigger, a massive cricket. I like it. Although it's probably bigger because it's on a rock. Sorry. But I'm going to put some notes in. What, singing notes? No, 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 I've been oh. like... If I'm... I might potentially overrun a bit on this one today because I was five minutes late and basically because I'm quite pleased Alice is going and I don't want to leave it unfinished. <laughs> Can we see Michael's? Yep. He's too adding stuff to it at the moment. Yep. 
This is Michael's. Uh, I, I did put the singing notes in. Mm. That's cool. I like that. Well done, Michael. And I like the way you use the same tones from the cricket as you have done in the rock. Mm -hmm. Not clever. Or oh, she's on. Rather. Amazing, well done, I say. Well done, Michael. Nice. Oh, I'm getting my speed on now a bit. I know! <laughs> I know, I'm running out of time. Um, okay. See how fast my hand can move. <laughs> no wonder I end up with an yeah, icky hand. Shush, 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 yeah. Don't put that kind of pressure on me. No, not today. Not no. back around today. I have all the time. <laughs> Do you want me to get the brackets round up? Oh, yeah. That's a good idea. Let's not have it too loud again, please. Yeah. <laughs> Make everyone jump out of their skin. Um. Oh, that's nice. That was 15 years ago. Well, that sound bite. Yeah. I think everyone knows what a cricket sound is. Yeah, but it's a nice sound to yeah. have it on a, in the background, isn't it? Play it again. Uh, yeah. That's nice. It's very relaxing. Mm-hmm. They're so musical. They are, aren't they? It's just such a pretty sound. I could fall asleep listening to that. I think I'd fall asleep with one right next to you. That'd be annoying. No, I don't know. If you had it right up to your ear, it'd be a really high-pitched scream, pretty much. That's why I think. <laughs> Okay, I managed to get that wing in quite quickly. I'm quite pleased with that. <laughs> I've got time to add the water. That ain't bad going at all. Oh, I've missed a bit. There's a bit of leg missing. I've always wondered what that would happen if you tipped all the water on. Okay. Yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> let's not find out. <laughs> I'm raising my cricket that's like a demon. No, he doesn't. He does. That Looks eye, like a cricket. That eye. Terrifying. Well, a little bit more detail on this. What is it called again? Ovipositor. <laughs> OK, 
Okay. Wow. I'm actually really pleased with that. <laughs> Funny how things turn out in the end. Uh, about 14 minutes. All right, all right. <laughs> Somebody else is nearly done as well. I think I did two to catch up. Now, when I'm adding the water, I still want to keep those really defined lines that show the reflections and to give that shiny impression of his on his legs and everything. So I've got to try and control the paints, not not be too washy with them, um, because I'll lose that distinct difference between the tones otherwise. Somebody else is done. Oh, yeah, you're showing me up. If you're done, can you find out any more facts about crickets in China? Okay. There's an extension task for you. So whether you've got a phone or something that you can Google from, or if you already have knowledge, do you want to share it with us? I know there's a cricket in Pinocchio, Germany cricket. On shading the saddle now. Really does look like a saddle. That would be a good way of developing your picture more creatively. A tiny little man on the saddle, or a little fairy or something. I'll just draw a stick hand. <laughs> Yes, life cycle of a cricket, no more than three months or 12 weeks. Very short-lived, isn't it? Thank you, Dean. What do they eat? That'd be something to know, actually, wouldn't it? Nuts. No. They've got teeth for nuts. No, oh yeah, they have a teeth, they don't have. Uh, what do they have? Insect. Other insects. Larvae. Uh, aphids. Aphids. Aphids, flowers, seeds, leaves, fruit and grasses. The omnivores again. Yeah. They eat plants and other animals. Pretty much like flies though, mostly probably. Aphids are tiny, like tiny little flies that we often get on our plants, um, eating them all. So, in a way, crickets are good pest control, like ladybirds. Then, if they eat aphids. But you think crickets are pests, though? Well, they'd be there if they're not. True. Well, it depends, I suppose. Normally, when you get aphids, you get an infestation of aphids. There's loads of them, and they just yeah. destroy the crops. You've got one or two crickets. Maybe they'll eat some of the plant, but they'll won't eat the whole lot and if they get rid of all the aphids then it saves you your crops doesn't it mm.
Ooh, I need to get a rig along. Quick, quick, quick. I'm trying. Yeah. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it in that one minute. I'm committed. So next week is our last um, animal of China. Oh, I thought you meant as in like it's the end of our term next yeah. week. Um, and we are drawing something called the dugong. I think that's how you say it. Dugong. We've got some fascinating things to to share about this creature. It's our marine marine animal. Um, a particularly sad fact about it actually as well. It's something has developed since I planned the draw along to us getting to that point, something has changed in relation to this creature. So we're going to talk about that. And then we will take a little break and return at some point in April. And we are going to South Africa. So we are going to be looking at drawing a giraffe, a lion, giraffe, a meerkat. Giraffe be hard going next. What else have we got? Um, secretary bird. I can't remember the last one. What was that? What's the... There should be an insect in there somewhere. It would check me phone. No, I'm getting distracted now. I'm terrible. Well, what's the box with the big ears? Is that in South Africa? Uh, I don't know. But we're not doing that. <laughs> uh, crocodile. Oh, great white shark as well. Wait, they're in South Africa? Yeah, I mean, South Africa obviously has got water around it as well. True. So you don't, it's not just what lives on the plains. Um, they're China's oldest ever pets. Oh, wow. So we kept crickets before we kept dogs. Pip, yours is so good. Oh, thank you. Considering I was dreading this, I am secretly really pleased with it. So maybe I can draw insects. I was thinking, oh, I'm going to struggle with this one. Maybe I just had a bit of a mental block. I know. <laughs> Stop it. You're stressing me out. I love yeah. I'm gonna do it. I feel like we need like a little timer that goes do 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 do. That would really that would stress me right out. I'd have a panic attack. I think live. <laughs> no. What's the timer? The stress of it. Yeah, trying to beat it. <laughs> and we say to all our learners as well on the courses, there's no deadline, you can work your own pace, and then I'll put a deadline on myself. What's that yeah. about? <laughs> nearly, nearly there. Yeah, I'm going to do this, we've got time. If there's any well, comments, yeah. can you read them out for me, Michael? Um. You can draw everything amazing. Oh, thank you. I can't, but thank you. <laughs> it's a new skill doing it and doing other things. Normally when I draw at home, I'm just in my own little bubble. I don't talk to anyone. I certainly don't read messages and read out facts yeah. and stuff. I, so this, and then what you can't see as well is that I've got a camera almost in my face <laughs> between me and the picture. So it is a very, very much a challenge for me compared to how I'd normally draw. But like I said right at the beginning, it's good to challenge yourself. That's how we grow and develop and get better. So, you know, I'm now getting better at multitasking <laughs> as a result of doing the draw along. How long have you been drawing for? Oh, forever. Um... I remember asking my big sister, because I've got three sisters, my oldest sister, um, I remember watching her draw a rabbit in a realism style. And I was still in primary school. I can't remember what age, but I was young. And I asked her to teach me how to draw in the same way. So um, she had a really specific way 
I've, I've told this story, so sorry, apologies if you've heard this before, but she had a really specific way of starting her drawing with the eye of the rabbit, and it was a very, like, draw it like this, draw that shape, then you put that in, and it became how I started a lot of my drawing. So often you'll find when I'm drawing, I start with the eyes, and I'm sure that has just come from being taught that by my big sister all the years ago, and it's just stuck. It's amazing, really, what how much of what happens in our childhood stays with us. She can't remember any of this, of course, because I've had this conversation with her, and she's like, I don't remember drawing rabbits. <laughs> but it definitely happened. <laughs> I didn't imagine it. Maybe a short dream. <laughs> and normally I spend about at least an hour and a half but probably closer to two hours on on a drawing like this so I sort of have to rush through some bits when I do the draw along you're so good I wish I could draw like you well this is it do you think I started off drawing like this at that age no. I did not so it only comes from practice that's what I think is really nice about art is that really the more you practice the better you get I personally think with something like maths, which is my nemesis subject, I'm never really going to get better at it. <laughs> so it almost feels like, oh, what's the point? But um, art, anybody, whatever your skills, everybody can get better the more they practice. It doesn't matter where your starting point is or where your end up point is, but there is no end point because you just continually get better. You'll always get better the more you practice it. The more I practice my timetables, it, it makes no difference to me. I still can't learn them. still can't remember them. I feel like I need a bit more colour on the abdomen. I think it's too pale, so... What should I put in? I think a bit of dark. This is always risky because I've put the water on the page. Sometimes it it goes a bit too dark when I draw over it. It'd be better to wait for it to dry before doing what I'm doing. But time constraints again mean that I want to try and get this onto the page as quickly as possible. So I'm just adding a bit of black because it just didn't look right. The page wasn't balanced right, if that makes sense. Like it looked too dark at the top and too light at the bottom. So I'm using my artistic license to make adjustments now. I think I've done it. <laughs> I'm so pleased with myself. Um, yay, and I did it ahead of time. I only lost six minutes at the beginning. It's bang on. Where's, I haven't, where's my pencil? Have you stolen it from me? Oh, tricked me. I was right there. <laughs> so, obviously sign it and date it. And there is my little fish kit from China. I've done a background. Oh, well done, Emily or Freya, <laughs> whoever that is. I did not have time for that. I was not going to push my luck and try and squeeze a background in as well. But considering I started this morning thinking, oh, my word, how is this going to go? I'm really pleased with that. And I hope you guys are with your outcomes as well. And as always, if you'd like some written feedback from me, just make sure that you post between 6 and 9 of p.m. tonight a comment under the picture of this illustration, and I'll be on this evening to give you some feedback. And next week, we visit, for the last time, virtually China to draw the dugong. So if you can join us for that, make sure you um, click on the event so that you get the reminders. But I just want to say thank you so much for joining us and bearing with me with the technical issues at the beginning. And um, hopefully I'll see you next week. I hope you're having a more awesome and rest of the week. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye.